Hello, I'm Tommy Wall from the Bartitsu Lab and welcome to part three of Bartitsu. How to use weapons and implements that you find in everyday bars, pubs, clubs and restaurants to your combative advantage. Whether you find that you cannot defeat the assailant unarmed, they're bigger than you, stronger than you, better than you. Whether you're facing multiples or whether you're facing armed opponents. So, what we're going to move into now is the use of the pool cue. Now, I don't have a pool cue with me, but I've got a decent simulator here. Now, again, if we're in a bar or a pub or a club, we're typically going to be surrounded by people or objects or furniture, so we want to keep this close. So, what I typically recommend is the use of a bayonet grip here. So, we hold the base of the pool cue at the back, again, held close to our waist. We have the hand positioned here and the pointy bit, the tapered end of the pool cue, from here, okay? Now, again, we're making sure that we don't want to be swinging this around like you see in the Western movies, because there's just not enough room to do that effectively. Ideally, we keep this bayonet grip here we get used to the idea of lunging. So again, making sure your legs lunge, an athletic lunge, and you get full extension on this pool cue. So if the assailant comes, I fire this out, making sure that my hands stay relatively tight to my body. So from here, I lunge forward. And again, I can probe, I can fake those lunges, and then I can commit. And again, if you're using the tapered end, you're really aiming for the eyes or throat, the squishy bits. If the tapered end hits you in the body, it's not really gonna hurt. So again, we're keeping people at threat, on point, I'm using my fake thrust. If I do want to commit, I make sure my body's behind it so my whole body weight comes behind that particular lunge, okay? Now imagine for a second that I need to ward blows with this. So again, I use this front third to parry things left or right. Parry it to the left and thrust. Parry it to the right and thrust. It's relatively simple to be able to parry different techniques with this. But unless this lands square in your eye, square in the throat, it's unlikely to be a game changer. What you're going to have to start to get used to being able to do is using the heavier, the chunkier end of the pull cue. So for my bayonet grip here, we might fake the thrust and follow through. Imagine it's like a rifle, follow through with the heavier, thicker end. A couple of different ways that you can do this. So we'll do it all off the thrust. So we'll lean in with the thrust and then we'll drive it straight in, so horizontally in, and we're going to drive that into the neck or under the nose. Thrust, bang, okay, nice and simple. Thrust, bang. We can come over the top, especially if the opponent's taller. So we drop our body weight, we thrust, and we come over, like so. And again, we're looking along the eyebrow line here, draw blood, get lots of blood going, or on the collarbone. Thrust, over, thrust, over, okay? And finally, you've got the thrust, under, so it comes directly underneath the chin. Again, if you're a smaller opponent, or if they've foiled you, if they've closed the distance, I can fake that thrust. As they close the distance, I'll drive the bottom end, the chunkier end of that pool cue, up under the chin or into the throat. So bear in mind, it doesn't have to strike upwards, it can come up and then thrust. So thrust, I raise this upwards, then I thrust with the chunkier bottom end of the pool cue. But the main principles are, keep it close to your body, Keep enough weapon in front of you, it's a long range distance weapon, so I'll be foolish to hold it close quarters, it's not gonna do much for me. I wanna use it as a distance weapon in this bayonet style fashion, making sure my body weight is behind the thrusts, that I faint and fake, and that when I do use the butt for something more final, I can do it horizontally, over the top, underneath, or underneath with a thrust. So so are some of the ways in which you can use a longer weapon, such as a pool cue, in a combative situation. Again, making sure to remember you can always faint and parry with the front end. You can always poke to the eyes and throw it with this. But if you want to finish that confrontation, the game changing part of the weapon is the chunkier bottom end. Finally, then we move into something that's very ubiquitous, the use of a chair. So, use of a chair, we use this wooden chair here. Now, one of the best ways to use the chair against a weapon, a short, sharp weapon, is to make sure that that chair is braced against the hips. So I brace the bottom end of this chair against my hips. I place my hands on either side. I keep my elbows in so that when I thrust, I can always return it to a place of comfort. It's always resting on my hips, as you can see here. I'm not holding it in mid space. I'm resting it on my front leg. I'm resting it on the hips. So I've got you here and I can use these legs combatively. I can use them to jab. I always recommend think of one leg at a time as the weapon. Don't try and think of all four as the weapon. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna hit you with this one in the eye, so I'm gonna aim with that one, I'm gonna aim with that one. 
Don't aimlessly strike forward, because a lot of people will end up in the middle. Making sure I use these as almost four attacking staffs. Boom, I use the business end of one of these, and I think aiming with one of these. Resting on the hips, elbows in, making sure I push using all my body weight, culminating in my triceps. So my triceps drive it forward and my body weight's behind it. I don't just feebly leave my body behind. I use short, sharp motions, pushing from the hip, using my triceps and my body weight to cause you some serious injury with these. And these can keep people away. They can cause some degree of damage. Eventually, I might do something a bit more powerful. So this is where we do a different technique. So imagine I've thrust you away. I'm using these. I might have caused you some damage or foiled a short, sharp weapon. If I need to finish you with this, I typically aim to grab one leg, grab the frame, and use this edge here. So I'll just hold it here. Use this edge as a striking surface because it's a strong part of the chair. So you imagine I've gone from thrusts here. I take a step forward and raise it. I don't go over my head. I keep it close to my body and I thrust sharply downwards using this striking edge here. Bang! And again, this can be anywhere on the face, on the chest, on the crown of the head. But making sure you do that at the right time. You know, the main thing to do is making sure you're using these legs combatively and that my body weight's coming with it. When I do need to use a heavier striking service, I grab one of the legs, grab the side, and then I strike downwards with this. And again, using my body weight to drop that painfully on the opponent. If I fail at this, I can then return to this chambered position here where I've got the use of the chair. And again, I can be relatively successful against knife attacks from here. I can play for time, but again, don't feebly just strike it out. Make sure your body's with it. Make sure you're driving it athletically from your muscles, from your lunges, from your triceps, and try and aim with one of these to something that would really hurt. Don't aimlessly put it out there. Think that in your throat, that in your solar plexus, that in your eye, holding it here. Once I've got that advantage, I move through to a closer range use of it, strike this down, Upon which I might need to return here, abandon the chair, and move into my unarmed combat, whatever I need to do. Obviously, these are all a bit of fun, a bit of conjecture while we're playing with things for COVID-19. But hopefully, you get some idea of how to look for weapons of opportunity or accident in a bar environment. I hope you look for your arsenal of weapons if you ever need to. And thank you for watching.